Right. So, you know, just going back to what you said, Mark, that, you know, gamers were not looked at as athletes. Well, an athlete is someone that has mastered a skill. Gaming is a skill, Mm -hmm. right? So that's the mindset that people have to change. Yeah, it may not be physical, but can I play chess? No, I am terrible. But there are chess athletes and they master chess, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's extreme and that's a really smart game, but that's besides the point. It's, you know, you just have to, athlete has, has changed. Okay. It's not just going out there who can lift the heaviest, who can run the fastest, who can throw the farthest. There's a lot more to it now, especially with COVID because everything's becoming more virtual. Mm -hmm. Um, So going with the, with the gaming athlete, the esport athlete, you definitely want to make sure that your, your brain is healthy. So how are you able to focus for so long? Well, there's two things that your brain needs. And this is the one thing that I took from my psychology course at Barry. This doc was completely right. Every time before a test, he's like, your brain needs two things, oxygen and glucose. My name is Dr. Mark Williams. Welcome to my masterclass. I have a PhD in education from West Virginia University. I have a master's in sport management and an MBA from the University of Massachusetts. I even have an undergraduate degree in sociology from William Patterson University. And currently, I'm the global scholar practitioner at HBCU, Florida Memorial University. But I also work for three of the largest sports brands in the world, Reebok, Champ Sports, and Foot Action. But I can't go anywhere without my Jordan 1s. Join me and my guests as we explore their rise to the top through adversity and challenges. It's time to help you find a hero in you. Welcome to my masterclass. Welcome to Dr. Mark's masterclass. Look, I'm wearing, you know, Florida Memorial University, you know, HBCU, historically black university. Man, I got to break this down for you. Anyway, the Lions, that's what we're representing today. I represent this every day. And I got, you know, you got Florida Memorial on the chest too. You know what I'm saying? But I'm wearing it because I am going to be speaking to a dear friend of mine at Florida Memorial University. But before we get started... I want to first acknowledge all the wonderful people that always hold me down. First and foremost, got to thank the brother Jacob Miles for getting us this wonderful opportunity to be here at East at, at the uh, when we're in Dallas. Yeah, I'm in Dallas right now. Yeah, I'm in Dallas. Uh, Esports Future Future Ride podcast. Okay, so this is the largest and biggest and best you know esports podcast in the world. It just is, and it's right here in the Big D, Dallas, and that's where we're located. And I'm also here at Innovation Media Enterprises with my girls, Aaron and Sia. Unfortunately, I can't see Sia, and that really is her name, Sia. So don't make any jokes about the name. She's dope. Aaron as well. Two women holding it down in the podcast world. Uh, I can't say much about, I can't say too much. Well, I can say a lot about them, but we're going to talk about them at another time, but I'll always give props to them for holding me down. And then I also got to hold, you know, this brother named AJ, he graduated from college last year, sound engineer. He makes me sound good. He can't talk to you today because he's going to be doing the sound effects, <laughs> but he makes me sound good. So shout out to AJ. Thank you for holding me down. There we go. Sound effects. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So right now we, uh, it is cold here. You know, it's cold here today. Uh, 36 degrees. I sound like the weatherman now, 36 degrees. It is outside. And I left the nice confines of Florida, Miami, which it was 79 when I left. Uh, But, you know, I used to live in Dallas and I should get used to this weather. And um, I grew up in New Jersey. I lived in Indianapolis. I went to college at West Virginia University and I went to school at University of Massachusetts. So I've been in Massachusetts. I've been in Indianapolis. I've been in what? New Jersey. (laughs) I've been in. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, where else did I live? I lived in Nebraska for a spell. So no more cold weather. I love those great cities, those great States, but I am, I'm excited about Florida, but I'm here in Dallas right now. And I'm excited about that, but I get a chance to interview a dear friend of mine and someone that I think people, when we think esports, we never think about the, uh, the emotional and the physical wellness 
of of the of the athlete, right? Uh, we just think about mothers and fathers, of course, and they should think about this. They think about, oh my goodness, my son or my daughter, my niece, my nephew, they're playing the game uh, in, in nauseam. They're playing like nine hours a day. They're, they're worried about their posture. They're worried about their eating habits. They're worried about their diet. Uh, but now in 2021, the game has changed. This is not like the 1980s and 90s where people are not just watching what they eat. They're not, uh, they're not just drinking anything like energy drinks. People are really taking care of their bodies. And uh, we're going to have some special guests on to talk about nutrition, talking about posture. I have a great friend that's a chiropractor talking about, you know, just the way you sit and how you, you, you project yourself. And I have a person here who's an athletic trainer. Um, and not just any athletic trainer, but she's an athletic head athletic trainer for Florida Moral University, which is an NAIA school. And she's going to talk a little bit more about that. But I wanted to bring Aaron, Elise on. Her name is Elise Carlson. Bring her on to talk about, um, you know, the emotional, the physical well-being of, of the athlete, not just the athlete, the video game athlete, but the athlete in general. And we're going to talk about, you know, a little bit about the things that she's done uh, in her career, but also what she currently does and some of the other wonderful things that she's getting ready to do and getting ready to embark on, because it's so important to talk about um, the the physical well-being of these video game athletes, as well as the athlete in general. We don't ever think about uh, how do we take care of an athlete. Uh, no one thinks about that until someone gets hurt and they, they think about their rehab. But she's going to talk about athletic training. Athletic training is not just all about a rehab. And she's going to talk about that because she's going to school me on some things, too. And why do I want to bring this sister on? Well, let me tell you something. Many of you know that I'm the global scholar practitioner at uh, Florida Memorial University in Miami Gardens, Miami, Florida. And one of the first people that greeted me when I came to the campus last June, July, uh, was Elise. And I was at an event and uh, we, I was standing at the table all by myself. It was a high end table. And she came up to me with her staff and said, I really want to know you. Uh, I would love to sit down and talk to you. And I, I, I'd love to invite you to lunch uh, with my staff. I mean, who does that? Right. And I was not I mean, I was just standing there by myself trying to enjoy my meal. And and she was uh, very, very engaging, very loving and just a kind human being. And she was true to her word. I think that that Monday I wound up having lunch with her and her, her, her staff. And uh, it's just it's, it's wonderful to meet people that speak the same language as you. Uh, but also had the same energy and the same spirit that you have. And uh, I can honestly say she's a friend. Uh, I enjoy her tremendously. It's something, it's nothing like working with someone that's your friend and someone that's got your back and that they will go in the trenches with you. And that's, that's what I would, that's what I, that's what I say about this young lady. So let me tell you a little bit more about, about her. Uh, she's a former student athlete from Barry university, also in South Florida, Miami. Yeah. Barry. Yeah. Division two school. She, wrote yeah she wrote when she was in school yes yeah, so we're going to talk about that and what that was like for her to be a division uh two athlete uh for four years okay and she received her uh undergraduate and her master's degree in athletic training well in sports medicine uh and then she obviously became into becoming the head athletic trainer at florida Memorial university um and and after she graduated she was the athletic trainer uh for professional orthopedic and sports physical therapist in new york uh, she was the athletic trainer at Miami Central Senior High School. And all four years when she was working there, the football team won a state championship. We're going to talk about that, too. I didn't know that about her, but that's pretty <laughs> that must be pretty cool because uh, as a trainer for a football team, I'm sure she's seen her share of injuries uh, with these athletes. But she got a chance to see that uh, four state championships. That must be amazing. I want to see I got to see the rings. I'm, I'm hoping they gave her some rings. Um, if they didn't give her some rings, we got to reevaluate that. My friends of Miami uh, uh, High School, you know, Dade County, y'all got to make sure y'all give my, my girl some rings, okay? Because if it wasn't for her taking care of the young cats, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we we don't give props to the athletic trainers because it, whether it's professional sports, college sports, or high school sports, we've got to give props to those folks because they're the ones that hold it down for our young people. Uh, also, she's worked uh, at, uh, at a doctor's clinic in, in Deerfield Beach, and she assisted a doctor with clinical evaluation patients, uh, insurance authorization, administering CAS, home exercises program, uh, injections, HA injections. I have no idea what any of this stuff is, but she's going to explain it to us, <laughs> okay? And, uh, and in 2020, she became the head athletic trainer for Florida Memorial University. And even most recently, we had one of our special guests on, uh, Evan Ernst. Uh, he's the... Um, He's the CEO for who we play for, and they provide uh, screenings uh, for the black community. And uh, we're going to talk about the EC, 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 EKG screen, screening for athletes. I, 
tongue twister. Okay. <laughs> I can't talk this morning. You know, she's a good friend of mine and I'm tongue twisted right now. And she's never known me not to be able to speak. But now I've got to bring her to the stakes. If I keep saying all these things, I'm going to butcher a lot of things because I'm not a medical doctor. I'm just Dr. Mark. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I'm Dr. Mark, education doctor. Yes, the, the doctor of the people, you know, sports, music, entertainment, fashion, film. That's how I get down. Without further ado, let me introduce you, my dear friend, and soon to be your dear friend, Sister Elise Carlson. What's up, Elise? Hey, Doc. How's it going? Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure to be on here with you and uh, to embark on this awesome journey with you and the esports here at Floor Memorial University. Was that was that a funny intro? That <laughs> was I was not expecting all that to be quite honest, but that was that was great. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. See what you see. Everybody's so serious all the time. Like, so at least tell us about your journey here. We're not going to do that. We're going to have some fun. We're going to let our hair down. My hair's already down. Yours is too. We we got no hair. But the short hair people, we we're going to get down. So, Elise, tell us more about, you know, you you, you went to college and uh, and ma your master's and your undergraduate degree are in South Florida. You're now working in South Florida, but you're from New York, right? Yes. Yes. Oh. From Westchester County. Westchester County. OK. Right now it's about 20, 25 degrees there. What made you choose South Florida to go to school? And wh wh what did you first start thinking about when you were going to college? What, what schools were you thinking about um, when you were thinking about going to college or playing sports in college? Why not schools in New York? Uh, why not a Harvard? Because, you know, you know, Harvard is the first school that had rowing uh, or one of the Ivy League schools or one of the schools up in New York or Cornell, one of those schools up there. What made you come down to Florida? Well, when I was in high school, um, looking for the colleges I was looking for, all my colleges were in the Southeast. So North, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. Um, so the one school in Florida was Barry. Um, I knew since I was a sophomore in high school, that I wanted to be an athletic trainer. Mm. So looking at the academics of the school, uh, I was also looking to play softball. Uh, softball was my passion. Uh, so I was trying to get recruited by all the schools. Um, I mean, as soon as I came to to South Florida, to Miami, I just fell in love. I mean, the, how can you not? You got the palm trees, you got the sun. Um, you, there's just the diverse community down here is amazing. Um, I wanted to be more more cultivated. I wanted to learn about more about other cultures. Um, I wanted to get out of New York. I wanted to I wanted to change a senior. I wanted to be independent and on my own. Um, my parents, you know, did a great job of. Uh, helping me grow up to be independent. You know, I, I remember I had to, wa I walked to school every day. Mm. Uh, I had to carry all my, my sport. I played field hockey, basketball, and softball in high school. So I would walk, it's a 30 minute walk. I would mm. carry my backpack and then my duffel bag, 30 minute walk every morning, you know, uh, in the winter, in the spring, in the, in the, in the fall, um, always had to get myself where I needed to go. Um, at the time, of course, I didn't really appreciate it, but now I do. It just helped me become independent. Um, hold on, hold one second, hold one second. Okay, back in the day, you know, our parents, our grandparents would say, you know, when I was younger, you know, we used to walk 40 miles a day. You young people don't exercise and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I do sound effects too, Ali. So, uh, so, so <laughs> I, what do you think of, you know, the discipline that you had at such a young age? Your parents uh, gave you that discipline of of hard work and exercise at a young 30 minute walks each day. That's a 60 minute walk. At least what, what yeah. is that? Yeah, it, I mean, it was trust me. Like I said, at the time, I did not enjoy it. And there were some days I didn't feel like walking and I would try to time it with my neighbor because he would always leave to go get coffee. So I would kind of leave at the same time he was like, Hey, you want to ride? I'm like, yeah, I'm in, you know? But I mean, it like those days I look back at it now and it's like, wow, like that helped me just with my determination and what I wanted to do. Um, you know, I had to get to school. I had to find a way. So I had to walk. Um, it just, it just helped build my character. Uh, I think that was one of the things that really just helped me become who I am today. Um, I mean, the discipline is just key. You know, in order to get what you want, you have to be disciplined because if you don't do all the steps you need to do, well, then it's not going to happen. You have to put in the work. So um, that along with other things, um, you know, just help me just 
core of who I am today. Mm -hmm. uh, another part um, is when I went, so when I decided to go to Barry, um, the reason why I decided was because they had one of the top athletic training programs in the country. Mm -hmm. So I went for academics. Um, mm -hmm. I tried to be recruited for the softball team, but the coaches were changing. Um, so there was a new coach coming in and like, I'll just come for tryouts. Uh, so I went for tryouts. I didn't make it. And um, I'm walking in our student union and the rowing team was out there saying, hey, come join. So I was like, sure. I, I don't know. Let's see how it is. So it literally just pulled me out of the student union and I be, I was on the rowing team. Um, my freshman year, I ended up rowing. What's I was in the stroke seat of the varsity four. So a team comprises of an eight boat and a four boat mm -hmm. and it's a point system. Mm -hmm. So I was basically the rower in front or technically in the bow. Um, oh, I'm sorry, in the stern of the boat and I was setting the pace. So I did that my freshman year and we, we won the NCAA championship that year. Mm. So we came first. So my freshman year, um, but what was that? What was that? What was that like? You just kind of uh, <laughs> so that's five rings now that you have <laughs> the four <laughs> high school championships and the, and the fifth NCAA. What is it like? People underestimate this thing um, with NCAA championships. They think it's synonymous with just basketball and football. Um, but what was it like winning a national championship uh, and, and as a division as a division two athlete, an NCAA athlete, period, a college athlete? What was that like? It was amazing just especially for a sport that i was only doing for less than a year mm. i mean i couldn't even comprise like all the emotions that's i literally was like wow did that just happen mm. you know um, i mean the team was great that year the coach was was great that year as well um it definitely just it it changed my life it made me want more mm. you know um but Rowing is by far for, for me, for what I've experienced, the hardest sport. Mm. Uh, I mean, it's full body. You're, you're out there, you're out there in the water. You have to deal with water conditions. You have to deal with, um, uh, you know, weather conditions, yeah, uh, boats passing by, you know, people don't really acknowledge us out there. So they'll speed by us with their wake and our boats going all around like this. And it's, it's, it's tough. It's definitely a lot more that you have to take in than just yourself. Um, it's also working with everybody else in unison. Mm. If someone is off by a beat, I mean, you feel it in the boat, the boat slows down, the boat gets off balance, uh, the boat turns a little bit, et cetera. So just, it was amazing. So it was, a blessing in disguise. I didn't make the softball team because now I I enjoy rowing. Um, I would love to also get back into it and pick up it uh, recreationally. Um, you know, get my own single. Just go out on the intercoastal ways down here because we have so much water down here in South Florida. Are you uh, a, are you are you a big fan of rowing? Like the the regatta? Are you from? Have you ever gone to that? The Lord. So the I've gone um, so the biggest regatta in the fall is uh, the head of the Charles in the Boston. Tra yes. We actually competed there a couple times. I mean, absolutely amazing atmosphere. It yes. was fantastic. And yes. then the biggest collegiate regatta was basically, you know, part of our playoffs um, was the uh, Dad Vale regatta in Philadelphia. So right on the Schuylkill River, I mean, again, amazing, amazing atmosphere, amazing experience. I mean, once you get in the last about 300, 250 meters, you just hear the fans because the fans are all right there, like at the finish line. I mean, you just hear them cheering. That just gets your heart pumping, heart going. It was, it's, it's awesome. I would love to go see, um, another regatta like that. But unfortunately my schedule does not allow me since I'm busy working with my sports here, yeah. but of course I would love to one day. So you didn't know, I knew about that. See, my brother went to Cornell and, um, and I, I spent a lot of time in Harvard. So I got a chance to see a lot of this growing up, um, as well as riding and, and, and being around all sorts of, uh, non-traditional sports, uh, like fencing as well. Uh, so people usually think, Oh, Dr. Mark, you know, music, sports and entertainment. I'm like, nah, I know a little bit more. I grew up in Princeton. And so I have seen a lot. And so I get a chance to see it, but I don't get a chance to speak this language to anybody. Cause they're like, what are you talking about? So unless I talk, know people that are in that space, I don't walk around advertising that piece of 
of my life. But uh, right. but yeah, I I'm excited about it. I I um I'm a big fan of. Do you remember the movie the the network social network was talking about Mark Zuckerberg movie? They that's what they were talking about. The guys that were the uh, the, Wink- the Winklevoss brothers. Uh, they they were they were they rode as well crew. Uh, so like I said, I'm a big fan of the sport, and I I didn't even know that about you, and I was like, what? And I was like, what? Wait a minute. So we got to talk more when I see you. And then so let me ask you a question about your parents. So your mom and dad, I've seen lots of images of your parents um, on on Instagram. Uh, how how what kind of role did they play in your life in terms of uh, really getting you to think about critically about education and about your future? Uh, what was that? What, what was it? How encouraging were they and how what kind of influence did they have on you? Oh, I mean, a big influence. Um, my, my mother was also an athlete all her life. Mm. Uh, she went to college and she's played sports herself. So Mm. back, you know, back then in the seventies and eighties, I think it was eighties that she went to college, you know, it was hard for women back then. It wasn't really known, but she played. Um, and she, I mean, she looks at me now, she's like, you have a lot more discipline than I did, Mm. you know, but she just invoked that into me. Um, education was always top priority. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a time where we moved, um, to different cities. I was in seventh grade. Mm -hmm. Uh, so like my sixth grade year, I was doing great. I was, you know, a student, no issues, seventh and eighth grade. I kind of lulled a little bit. Um, I, I, I was having trouble. Um, you know, I was getting like C's and D's and, and I couldn't really, I don't, I don't know why. I don't know if it was just the move that affected me, but I mean, you know, I had a good, I had a good teacher system with the school. So they were able to help out. I was, I also had, I had a learning disability growing mm-hmm. up, so I had to get extra help. Um, so I always had these extra tutors and extra class sessions just to help me get back on track. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the time I hit high school, they, they were like, okay, like you're, you're good to go. You can go on your own. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, the education was always just a big piece. Um, you know, I remember, you know, my parents helped me out with projects. Of course I would leave them to the last minute and I'm like, Oh, why did you do that? I'd leave it to the last minute. But they were always there helping me. Um, if I had ever had a math question, you know, they didn't really answer, but my mom was really into science. She went to school for marine biology. So she would help out, uh, when she could, but I tried to do everything on my own. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, just enforcing that independence. But my parents, you know, I just would show them my my report card. I was about to say my credit card, <laughs> my report card, um, and then you know that that's how they check on me. Mm-hmm. Um, but always, education was always first. What? Now you played sports, and education was important. Now we this show the the esports feature our podcast network. Um, shout out to Jacob Miles. Thank you again for holding us down and providing us this wonderful space. Uh, we talk about video games on here. What, what did you play video games growing up and where are some of the games that you played and how, how did that influence you in terms of how you, you know, moved in society in terms of dealing with your friends or dealing with your peers or, or the confidence it may have given you on the field and playing basketball and softball. So interesting enough, my brother was a bigger gamer than I am. Mm-hmm. Um, he loves the, like the Madden, um, the MLB, um, when we were, when we were kids growing up, um, we had, uh, WrestleMania mm. was the name. We'd always play WrestleMania. Um, so my brother would play me, but he would always beat me. Mm. Uh, you know, I never, I never honestly really played the, the biggest game that I played was Mario Kart. Mm. I mean, that game is just awesome. Love it. I would still play it now. You know, that's just so much fun with the, you know, you can have three or four people play. So we play with my cousins and, you know, uh, just try to get a big group going, but I didn't really have much. I, I remember when Sega, you know, Mm. when we first got our Sega Genesis game (laughs) and like, I, I don't know if I got it or my brother got, but we got the Lion King game, you know? And I, I would play the Lion King game. I remember the little Simba and get the little symbols and everything, you know. My brother would always beat going to the next level, and I never did. So I was like, ah, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go outside and play, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so video game. So I did a little bit, but not much. Um I I can't really, it's hard for me to sit still. Mm-hmm. I need to be up moving. Um, you know, hence why this job is just is great because I'm I'm up and around, I'm moving all the time. Um I don't enjoy it much when I have to sit in my office and do administrative duties. Mm-hmm. Uh, drives me nuts. And then I 
notice that my posture starts starts to sag and then oh. my back hurts. I get up and, and move around and stretch. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, video video games growing up, I, it was there, but it wasn't. It honestly wasn't a big part. Mm-hmm. Sports was my big part. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we mentioned and we want to get into that piece of it, and then uh, your interest and in wanting to become an athletic trainer. I'm curious about that, and and your 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 choosing Barry. And we have a, fr- a few friends in common at Barry, Doctor Darling Kluka, the dean, uh, dean extraordinaire, one of the best deans in the country in physical he- uh, fitness and health and sport management. Known Doctor Kluka for years. Uh, Doctor Rosenberg, my man, sports management. Love you guys down there, Barry. See, you didn't know. See, I know a lot of people. Okay, <laughs> I've been fortunate to be able to travel around this globe and, and meet a lot of college uh, professors and deans. And and I'm so glad that we have that in common with Barry. Barry University, uh, many of you don't know, is uh, in South Florida, uh, not that far from Florida Memorial University. We have a lot of schools near us, Florida International, Florida Atlantic. We have, what else is near us? We have St. Thomas, which is next door to us. Um, yeah, we in Broward uh, College is near us. Uh, and, we're, and we're right there in South Florida. And so... Um, so, yeah, let me ask you a question. You talked about being an athletic trainer. I mean, you knew that already in high school. I mean, not a lot of people know their career path and let, let alone athletic trainer. What made you say at, let's say, in 10th grade, 9th grade, I want to be an athletic trainer? Well, how did that come about? So my school, my freshman and sophomore year of high school, uh, we actually had an athletic trainer on staff. Um, and then she ended up leaving after the two years and going, uh, on another job. Um, however, she, uh, unfortunately misdiagnosed a teammate of mine. She, Mm. we were playing basketball. She hurt her knee. Um, and you know, she diagnosed it as a hamstring strain. Well, when my teammate went to the doctor, it was actually a meniscal tear and she needed surgery. Mm. And I mean, that's, that's a, you know, that's a big difference. I mean, look, like I wasn't there for the eval, could have presented as one thing or another. So, you know, anything could have happened that I didn't see. And of course, at the time I didn't know, but at, I just wanted that. It just interests me a, a lot. And I was like, I want to be an athletic trainer. Mm. I want to make sure I don't like misdiagnose somebody, you know, um, it's, you know, I, uh, I'm not going to say I'm right all the time because Mm -hmm. I'm not, but that's also why I fall back on my staff. I Mm -hmm. fall back on our team physicians. Um, that's what we work as a team just to help keep the health and safety of these athletes. And of course, at the time I didn't know that, you know, so again, stuff could have happened that I didn't see maybe my teammate was complaining of pain in the back of her thigh at first, you know, like there could have been a lot of things, but that just really interests me. I remember just sitting down and talking to her. I think her name was, I think it was Jen. If I remember, I would just pick her brain a little bit. And I, you know, I was like, I would love to volunteer and just like help you out. Like when I can, um, unfortunately we didn't get to that point because she left. Um, and then the school didn't hire an athletic trainer my junior and senior year. Um, so that's what, uh, basically guided me towards my, my career path. And I'm happy that it did. Well, before we go, we want to give a shout out to Gretel and Tamara, who's who are amazing assistants. That was who I had lunch with. Uh, and they do, they, they also have, they play a different role, a similar role, but different roles in terms of how they evaluate uh, the athletes at Florida Memorial University. Each one of those uh, young ladies I mentioned, uh, they, their jobs are to work with different teams and provide uh, athletic training uh, uh, to those teams, but also work closely with the lease and, and uh, making sure that, they, that they're providing a proper evaluation. Um, now, now during COVID, uh, one of the things that people may or may not know, they, they you know, a lot of people uh, watch the news if they like sports and they look at all the colleges around the country. The NCAA, majority of NCAA programs last year, um, excluding, uh, let's say, the Power Five conferences uh, like the ACC, the Big East, the Big Ten, uh, they, they allow their athletes to play sports in the fall. Uh, and after that, uh, all the historic, historically black college leagues like the MEAC and the SWAC, uh, they suspended uh, athletic uh, events. And I believe the Ivy League schools, most of the schools said no. But the NAIA, which is a separate entity, uh, they allowed mo- a lot of the schools participated, including Florida Memorial. Uh, what was that like for you as an athletic trainer uh, dealing with COVID, dealing with uh, the mask, wearing the mask, uh, practicing social distancing, all that, all those things? How did that play a role? And you as an athletic training trainer, um, 
uh, in terms of your decision making, in terms of deciding if 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 it was safe for the athletes to play, and what decisions went into that when you when you determined that. So athletic training, I like to say that we are we have a very big toolbox. So we go from injury prevention, evaluation, rehabilitation, clinical diagnosis. Um, and prognosis. We have all that in our toolbox. Now we can add infectious disease mm. due to COVID. Mm. Um, and that was actually given from my colleague, BJ, uh, at uh, Southeastern. Um, he's one of like, he's like, I call him the head athletic trainer of the South of the Sun Conference. Um, I was uh, chatting with him a lot, especially because I was new with the South, with the Sun Conference. So I would just pick his brain a little bit. Um, but this just, it threw a curveball. It really did. Um, you know, unfortunately right now we can't look at the common cold as a common cold anymore. It's taken serious. We have to quarantine the athletes, um, and then they have to be cleared by a medical professional. Mm. Uh, of course, last year in the fall with us playing, you know, testing wasn't as easily accessible as it is now because of, um, just how new it was. Uh, and, uh, in, you know, like once, testing comes out, it was price, it was pricely. And now that testing is, is a lot more demand. It's, you know, a little bit more easily accessible, but having to do, you know, incorporate the daily questionnaires for the athletes, the daily temperature checks, um, you know, before their activity, uh, it's, there's a lot that we, that we try to implement to have the health and safety of these athletes, because, you know, being an athlete, how can you just sit still in quarantine? I mean, basically they did from March till August, mm. you know, they, they the kids were eager to get back out and play. So we were doing everything we can to ensure the health and safety of these athletes. Um, unfortunately, we can only control what we can control here in athletics, but once practice is over, competition's over, everyone goes home. You know, we can't, we can't control that, unfortunately. Mm. Um, so that's why we just had to keep um, keep the daily questionnaires every day. You know, the kids, we always specify to the athletes and to the coaches as well and administration that everyone has to be honest. Mm. If you're feeling sick, stay home. Mm. Um, it, it was a hard, uh, uh, manifest to come by because everyone's like, Oh, I'm sick. I'm still going to go to work. I'm still going to, you know, bust this out because I need to get this. I need to get this paycheck or, you know, I'm not that sick. Well, we can't have that mentality anymore. Mm. Even as an athlete, you're not feeling well. Oh, I'm, I'm okay to practice. I'm still okay. It's like, well, actually right now, unfortunately, like we can't do that anymore. Mm. So it's, it's about, it's a, we have to just change that mind shift. Mm -hmm. Um, it's still, it's, it's getting better, but it's, it's still just having that shift. I mean, to be honest, you know, there was a couple of days that I had a stuffy nose, mm. you know, and I, I still came into work, but technically I shouldn't have, but it's that mindset because if I don't show up, then now we're down an athletic trainer and then coverage is we're already spread thin. So now it's even worse. So I can't let down my team. So it's all, the, all these different aspects, but we did, you know, we did the best that we could. Um, and we had to learn a lot from, from the fall semester. Uh, now with the spring semester, you know, the university really stepped up. Um, and they're testing everybody weekly. I think that's a great plan. We are the only school in the Sun Conference that's testing our athletes weekly, but along with our athletes, we're also testing faculty, staff, and the rest of the student body, um, which is, I think, was a great turn of turn for us, uh, just to again really help the ensure the health and safety of not just the athletes but everybody. And we and so let's pause really quick um, and want to quickly remind you that you're listening to the Esports Future Eye podcast uh, and Innovation Media Enterprises. Thanks to Aaron and Sia. Thank you for holding us down. AJ on the wheels of steel. When I say wheels of steel, at least I mean, not my mean turntables. I'm talking about the microphone, the sound engineer, the man that makes it happen. AJ, brother AJ, thank you. And again, thank, thank you, Jacob Miles, for this. And let me remind everyone let, let, to, to kind of educate some folks about uh, how COVID testing is at Florida Memorial University. Every university is different. Uh, now what they do is when we test everyone weekly, um, excluding athletics, but everyone at the school, including athletes, they get tested once a week and they provide us a wristband to wear color coded so that, um, that we keep everyone honest and that everyone's been getting their, their, their COVID tests and they do the, the nose swab test. And we do that on a weekly basis. Um, and so 
one of the things I know Elise and I talked about recently about how this pertains to esports is that everything that you do for athletes now is similar to what you're going to have to do with for the esports athletes because they are athletes now too. They are competing. They may be face to face with people. If they're face to face, they're going to have to go through the COVID testing too. Um, we look at them as far as making sure they're taking care of their their health, their their back, their posture, their the their stretching. What are some of the things that you see can be um, of of help or assistance to an esports athlete with your background in athletic trainer? What are some of the common themes that you see uh, with a person that's playing games versus someone who's playing basketball or football? Right. So, you know, just going back to what you said, Mark, that, you know, gamers were not looked at as athletes. Well, an athlete is someone that has mastered a skill. Gaming is a skill, Mm -hmm. right? So that's the mindset that people have to change. Yeah, it may not be physical, but can I play chess? No, I am terrible. But there are chess athletes and they master chess, Mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's extreme and that's a really smart game, but that's besides the point. It's, you know, you just have to, athlete has, has changed. Okay. It's not just going out there who can lift the heaviest, who can run the fastest, who can throw the farthest. There's a lot more to it now, especially with COVID because everything's becoming more virtual. Mm -hmm. Um, So going with the, with the gaming athlete, the esport athlete, you definitely want to make sure that, your, your brain is healthy. So how are you able to focus for so long? Well, there's two things that your brain needs. And this is the one thing that I took from my psychology course at Barry. This doc was completely right. Every time before a test, he's like, your brain needs two things, oxygen and glucose. Mm. Oxygen, breathing, exercising is another way because you get your heart rate up and you're getting the, um, the oxygen to the muscles so you can keep working. Okay. Mm. And glucose, healthy eating. So fruits, vegetables, carbs, protein, everything you need that. So your brain can function properly. And while you're sitting, you know, these guys, these athletes can sit for prolonged periods of time and play, you know, a tournament can go for, for hours. Mm. Right. So if you're sitting there, you know, and you're not getting the proper nutrients, well, your brain's not going to function properly. Mm. You're not going to, you're not going to perform at your, at your peak level. Mm. Okay. So that's important there. Um, Going back to what you said about posture. Again, you're sitting, you're at a place for a prolonged period of time. If your posture, if you're the proper ergonomics of your seat is not correct, you're going to have, you can, you can develop knee, you can develop hip and back pain, uh, even upper back pain, shoulder pain, maybe Hmm. Um, you can, it can even affect your elbows. You can get tenant, uh, it's called tennis elbow, but lateral baconolitis, you know, if it's not seated in our, our, uh, seen in a proper way. Um, even, you know, you can develop tendonitis in your thumb gamers. What do they use yep. their thumb, right? Yep. And All carpal, their and carpal tunnel syndrome as well. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. So if they're using a keyboard, you're like this the whole time, you're compressing all this right here mm-hmm. and you have a lot of blood vessels and nerves that go through. So it's a common, um, carpal tunnel syndrome. Um, so there's that stuff to look after. Um, I think that with athletic training coming to esports, we can come in, warm the athletes up, get the oxygen, right? So warm up so you could do like, I like to do uh, like a mobility routine just to get them stretched. When I have my athletes here do a mobility routine, I always say breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth, right? Okay, because the, the breathing in, you're getting the oxygen in. And when you breathe out, that helps release the muscle tension. So I should so, do that before my children. So breathe in. Yep. <sighs> yep. Nice and controlled. Absolutely. Um, also, just it's good to because after sitting for prolonged, you need to get up and moving so the muscles can work properly. Right. So you can get the oxygen adequately to the muscles. So mm-hmm. being able to incorporate uh, like rehab or an exercise program for these athletes is going to be vital again for their musculoskeletal health, but also for their brain health as well. Hmm. Um, because a, a mobile body is a well-functioning and healthy body. Hmm. Wow. That's deep. Now, again, some of you are not still connecting the dots between traditional athletics and athletes that are, uh, that, that are playing video games because it does take a skill, my friends, to sit in front of a computer, uh, or, or a TV screen. If you're playing, um, you know, if you're, 
not doing PC by, on a computer, uh, with your personal computer playing games. If you're doing, um, you know, working with working with, uh, um, you know, PlayStation or Xbox, um, the console games, it's still, it takes an amazing skill to do, whether you're a professional player or if you're just playing for fun, uh, to, to, your, the, the ability to think, uh, the ability to, to to think quick on your feet in order to maneuver something, uh, your adrenaline, your oxygen, your, the kind of food you're intaking is going to play a role in how you're functioning. The same way you're taking a test at school, it's the same thing playing a video game. Uh, it takes it takes a skill set. It also takes a mindset to make sure that your the mind, body, and soul is, is also aligned. And Elise is right. We both are former student athletes. And I'll tell you, uh, when you are idle and you're not doing anything, you're sitting there and you, you're, you're going to want to do something. So it's the same thing with the people that are playing the game. So one of the things that you could think about, I think about career opportunities, people always thinking about the video game industry and, oh my God, it's just about playing the game. It's not. There's also career uh, opportunities there. And what we're doing at Florida Memorial, we're creating pathways for students that have are, that are interested in career paths. There might be someone who may want to do athletic training. Uh, they may want someone that wants to be a nutritionist around the video game industry. There might be someone who wants to be a caster, someone that interviews people. There might be people that uh, want to be in marketing. Uh, there's someone that may be psychology. I mean, it's every major Major that you can think of and in uh, academia, you can apply it to the esports and video game industry. Oh, yeah. And so we just broke it down for you just now about athletic training. The average person may not even know what athletic training is, but you know, when you watch your favorite athlete on TV, when they're getting uh, tended to on the sidelines, when they're getting hurt, that's usually the athletic trainer or the team doctor that's administering the, the care that they need. So if the people that, that are your favorite athlete needs care and help, don't you think that the person that is playing the video game, they're going to need it? But we're not thinking that way. But I'm glad we have Sister Lisa on to to kind of give us some perspective about that. Um, and one of the things I know when I when I first met you, uh, I, you, were, you were asking me, what role could you play? Were, were you surprised? When we, as we began talking, how um, that you saw the the synergies there. I mean, I'm not. I know you weren't surprised by that, but uh, but but how how exciting was it to know that you can take your skill set and athletics and bring it to the video game industry? I mean, it's it's very exciting because over the last five years or so, maybe even more, athletic trainers have really branched out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're not just working with. Uh, college athletes, high school athletes, or professional athletes anymore. We're really gearing towards the general public because we can help the general public as well. Mm -hmm. Again, with our vast toolbox, we can offer a lot. Um, so just being able to connect with you and just, you know, you know, see these opportunities and just to help other people with their career opportunities. I mean, it's, it's just such a joy and I'm really excited about it. Yeah. Let me ask you a quick question. Now the commissioner, um, um, Keys uh, of the of the of the uh, Sun Conference. Uh, how closely do you work with the commissioner and also other the other athletic trainers? And because I know you recently you were asked to be to sit in on to be uh, one of the the thought leaders uh, of the conference in athletic training. What, what was that like? And how how much of a voice do you have when determining the kind of things that you need to do as an athletic trainer for the conference overall? Yeah. So. Um to elaborate a little bit more, the commissioner asked me uh, to be on the Sun Conference COVID-19 Task Force. So basically just to help ensure, um, you know, the sports team, every sports team in the Sun Conference are on track, who's in quarantine, who's this, you know, who like looking at the game schedules, make sure everyone is able to get in their games on time. If there's uh, a situation that comes up, we discuss it as a group. Um, so it was it was a great honor. Um, it was completely unexpected. Um a seat opened up. Uh, I'm not sure how or why, but it did. But I was absolutely just floored when the commissioner asked me to. And the commissioner is Dustin Wilkie. For this, so people know that that's the commissioner. And our our president is uh, Dr. Jafis Hardrick. And then we also have a athletic director uh, Siobhan Mansfield. We call it AD Mansfield. So we want to make sure we're giving the proper names and and the props to the right people. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Lee. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, no, that's uh, that's absolutely true. We got to give the shout outs where it's due. Right. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's you know, we meet every week um, and we like it's it's a panel. We we discuss things, um, you know, and we vote. Uh, there's there's a way for teams to reinstate if they're in quarantine. Um, so, you know, given we look at a case by case basis and we vote if that team can go back early or not, mm -hmm. uh, just given the circumstance. So. 
um, it's, it's, it's an, it's an absolute honor, um, to, to be asked to be on that task force. Yeah. And one of the things I, I love about you is that you are so inclusive. Uh, I remember about two or three, about, about three weeks ago now, maybe a month now you asked me, you said, Hey, um, I I'm thinking about getting, uh, these, uh, I want to test our athletes in terms of looking at their heart. And I want to make sure I get the term right. Is ECG or is AKG is looking at the heart, but ECG is that those are screenings, ECG? So ECG and EKG are the are the same thing. They're the same so, thing. Okay. Yes, correct. So, you know, everyone uses the term EKG and it's ECG. It's it's basically testing the heart, the heart rhythm. So okay. when you go for physical and your doctor just wants to test the rhythm of your heart lying down. So you lie down. You know, they put all these leads on your chest coming around and then on your arms and then your your hips. Um, so just looking at the heart rhythm um, mm -hmm. just to see because that, that's a preliminary test to see if there's any serious heart conditions. Um, because as uh, everybody knows um, or a lot of people do, you know, heart conditions are uh, difficult to detect. If you don't do at least an EKG or... Um, an echo, which is an ultrasound of the heart, that's a more in-depth um, test that that needs to be done. If the ECG is abnormal, then they'll go to the echo. Mm. But that's how they find um, any any heart or abnormalities. So, um, like hypertrophic myopathy is a very common, uh, or not? I'm sorry, not very common, but it's, I guess that's the most well-known um, heart condition. So it's basically an enlarged heart, and it doesn't basically doesn't work properly. Mm. Okay. So, um, an ECG can detect that or even just some other things, um, working closely with Evan, with who we play for. I mean, he's done what he's done with, with his company is absolutely amazing. Um, and they've, they've and, 150 student athletes. They've actually tested uh, around the country. How did you get connected yeah. with him? Because you, that's, that will be the basis of this conference, this part of the conversation. You met him or you connected with him and you immediately got me involved quickly and wanted me to connect with them with him because here, here's a, I'm going to read this. This is a, an alarming number, uh, everyone. So I got to tell you that according to the study of the NCAA sports, black athletes are disproportionately affected by sudden cardiac death, particularly basketball players who um, their, their race rates of dying is one, one in 1000. Um, and so sudden cardiac arrest SCA is the leading cause of death in schools and in sports more than any form of cancer, uh, concussion or illness combined. That's, that's scary. How, yeah, why why don't we know this? So, and that's, you know, that's the reason why I brought you in doc is because with your connections, um, you know, he, he was talking to me, Evan being he, um, about reaching out to all HBCUs. And, you know, like I said, I thought of you immediately because I know, you know, a lot of people in the upper ups and other HBCUs. Um, we've been, my staff and I have been trying to bring E ECGs here to school since, since we got here. Mm. Um, and unfortunately cost, cost was, uh, was a factor. Um, but now unfortunately with COVID, um, you know, people can develop heart conditions such as myocarditis, you know? So that's why we want to minister EKGs to our student athletes to, you know, do our part to make sure that they are healthy to go back to playing sport. Mm. Yeah, and Evan, Evan, uh, he's the uh, he's the um, CEO of who we play for. Him and his coach, uh, uh, Kurt Easton, uh, who coached him in college, uh, uh, high school actually, and uh, he started this because one of his friends, uh, one of the fellow soccer players, uh, died because of misdiagnosed uh, uh, of, of his heart condition. And so this is very serious. And and I know um, as we talk about the athlete, athlete, we know that um, you know the video game athletes also going to have to probably look at this as well. The video game industry, there's not a governing body or board yet, but there needs to be. Um, we, as we continue to have competitive gamers out there, whether it's Call of Duty, whether it's Fortnite, whether it's, uh, you know, Madden 2K, that they need to get tested, too. Um, how important is that for our, our, our fellow our, our young gamers out there that are gaming that they get tested for this as well? Absolutely. I mean, it, it's it's across the board. Again, they're athletes. Um, you know, they're they're working on a, on a specific skill. Mm -hmm. So. You know, it's the the e, ECG is is should be across the board for everybody. Mm. You know, if we, if we could test everybody 
I mean, you know how much prevention that would do, but unfortunately, you know, with insurance and costs, it's it's difficult. But again, what Evan is doing to try to make it cost effective for everybody would be would be amazing. So the uh, these gamers, you know, it's they should they should do a basic yearly physical, mm-hmm. and the ECU should be included. Wow, absolutely. Yeah, when we we talked to Evan uh, a few weeks ago um, about that, and it's just so powerful. Uh, very powerful. I, I'm just, again, th- they're going to have to bring you back on again because there's so many different areas that we need to still talk about, especially in, in heart health and just health in general um, that we, again, we don't equate to uh, with video games or we just, we, we kind of like segment it to certain kinds of people. And it's like, no, we all need to think about that. And I, I'm just, I'm honored and privileged to call you friend. And uh, you're so knowledgeable. And I, I appreciate you coming by uh, Dr. Mark's uh, masterclass today. Uh, we got to do this in person next time. Uh, I'll be more animated uh, <laughs> when I see yes. you too. Oh, be more animated. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And so I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Uh, this is Elise Carlson, my friend, she is the head athletic trainer at Florida Memorial University. Yes, yes, representing Florida Memorial University. Florida Memorial University, yes. Yes, in South Florida, uh, one of the top athletic trainers in the United States. Uh, just a joy um, and a privilege to know her and call her friend. I'm looking forward to seeing you very soon, Elise. Do you have anything you want to say to everybody? Because people are wondering, did I pay you to say all this? I mean, like I said, this is this is when I when people say this is my man's in them. I'm the, she's not my man's in them, but but I, I will say that because I use that terminology. That's my man's in them. That's my girl's in them. But I don't want to say my girl's in them. It, does, it sounds kind of whack. My man's in them. You know what I'm saying? What's up? I don't mean man, man. I'm just, stop it. Listen, it's just figure of speech, my friends. Anyway, Elise is my girl. How about that? There's some there people out go. there. Like, I can't like believe that. she said it. He said it's his girl. No, no, stop. Relax. Elise is, Elise is dope. Don't get it twisted about that. We're not talking about drugs. Dope means cool. I got to school my audience sometimes, at least. But anyway, <laughs> after they're cool, they know what I'm talking about. Thank you for being a friend and coming on. Um, and we want to also thank uh, Esports Future Futurize Podcast. Uh, Jacob Miles, thank you for creating this opportunity for us. Innovation Media Enterprises, Aaron and Sia, thank you for holding us down. My executive producers, making us look good all the time. And AJ, thank you again for the sound, always holding us down. I wasn't trying to rhyme right there, but that's just how, how, how it goes. This is how it be. All right, so... Let's just say that we are more enlightened than we were uh, an hour ago, okay? And uh, we are very excited to have someone with her expertise and also parents that are out there listening. I'm hoping that there's something that we said today that can get you to think differently about your child, yourself, and even people around you, even your peers. And maybe we look at athletes and video game athletes differently. Now they should be looked upon in a similar manner. Um, Again, I learned a lot today. I don't know about you, but we're going to bring Elise back uh, to talk to us more about uh, other opportunities in the space in gaming, but also in professional and college sports as well. Uh, And we also want to encourage you, my friends, to continue to practice social distancing. Yes, I got my mask. I wear my mask. I represent Florida Memorial University. I represent a lot, but I also represent the city of Miramar, the great city of Miramar, Florida. Yes. Mayor Messam. Yes. You know, Messam, like I'm going to mess you up. Yes. That's Mayor Messam representing Florida University of Florida, Florida Memorial University with Dr. Hardrick is our president, but also the city of Miramar, which is where I'm moving to. I, this is my mask I wear in the airport. We want to encourage you to practice social distancing. Please, my friends, continue to do that. Uh, please continue to wash your hands. 20 seconds, uh, six feet distance, maybe more. Uh, also, what else we got to do? Sanitizer. Uh, just And then continue to keep encouraging each other and, and blessing each other. And please, when you see people out there, they're not wearing their mask. Maybe they took it off for a second because they're trying to breathe. So don't give them a hard time. Please don't do that. You don't know what anybody, anyone's not wearing that mask or why they take it off for a second. I do it sometimes. I sometimes put it down here sometimes because I want to breathe a little bit. Let people breathe and don't be so quick to judge people if they're not wearing it. Just say God bless them and walk away from them. Please do not cause any problems in the stores, at the gas stations. God bless us all. And we pray that this disease, uh, this sickness, this illness is, is, will, will, will erode at some point and that all the people that have been affected by it, we pray for their families. And remember, my friends, you can control three things, what you think, what you do, and what you say. Okay? Remember that. God loves you. Peace. I look forward to seeing you soon on another episode of Dr. Mark's Masterclass. We out. Thanks for listening to Dr. Mark's Masterclass. I pray you enjoyed yourself today. 
I had a good time. I don't know about you, but this podcast is part of the Esports Future Ride Podcast Network and is produced by Innovation Media Enterprises. Please be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast channel and let us know how we're doing by leaving a comment or a review. Class dismissed. Class dismissed.